So I was recently browsing YouTube and I came across this video by Goodgis. Goodgis? I think that's how you pronounce that. In which I set out to create a game in one hour. I left a comment under the video saying I'd like to give something like this a go and they replied back telling me I should, so I did. The idea of the challenge, for those who don't know, is that you can come up with a basic idea beforehand, then you've got one hour to see how far you can get in the project, with the aim to have a complete loop and a sort of complete game. And then you could take another hour on top of that to add a bit more polish. I started as always by opening up a new project in Unity and getting all the relevant packages installed. I've not done a huge amount of 2D projects, but I figured 2D was the way to go here for this, as a one hour time frame is quite limiting and, you know, 3D just adds another dimension of complexity. The basic idea I had was that the, you were this little orb that would move around and you would have other orbs that span around you and you'd use these to take out the enemies that were chasing you. And the goal would be to just survive as long as you could. So I got to work making the artwork and getting a rigid body controller together to control the player and make some enemies that would chase the player. A huge part of this process was spent finding a way to procedurally generate the orbs in a circle around the player. So I didn't actually progress as far as I would like to by the end of this first hour. I'm terrible at maths and I mean just look at this bit of code, it's got pi coming out of the wazoo. But as with all code problems, if you look hard enough there's always an obscure forum you can yunk some genius mathematicians work from. By the end of the first hour though, I did have most of what I set out to do in that there was a rigid body control player, enemies would spawn and chase the player, and there were some orbs that spun around. And after that, that was kind of done, but it was a little bit lacking. There was no indication as to your health or score in this first build, so for the second hour, I implemented a little bit of a nicer level design, added a hood and some music, and this is how that turned out. As you can notice, the character moves so slowly. I'm not sure why I didn't fix this before making the build. This is the way it's set in stone forever now. Having built this out, I could have left it there and gone about my day having completed the challenge. But where would the fun in that be? I ended up falling into a coding dreamlike state. Just one more thing, now I'll fix this, and then bam, it was the end of the day but I had something I was quite happy with. In terms of changes, I just added some fun sound effects to the enemies as they bumped into each other, some particles and post-processing were added to give it that juice. I changed the core mechanic to be about gaining enough speed to cut through enemies, and the orbs were just then more of a power-up which you could actually fire out. I slapped a main menu and some basic information on the front and figured that was great and I would call it a day. Challenge not just completed, but exceeded. I'd made a pretty fun game in just one day, but what would it look like after one week? Oh, for the love of gut. So the following day, I booted up the projects after work and spent a couple more hours polishing. I designed a bit more of a level instead of a big empty room. I put in some speed boost pads that would speed the player up and help them reach what I was referring to as terminal velocity a lot quicker. Terminal velocity meaning that when you reached that speed you could cut through the enemies. I also added in another ability which is this uh, shockwave that would push the enemies back as they would quite quickly surround you and make you unable to move. On day three I continued with some more juice stuff by adding some particles to the player, sound effects when the player got hit, these bounce pads that would bounce you away, and also a new type of enemy that would remain stationary but fire bullets out towards the player. The player could cut through the bullets, but an issue with the sprite layers meant that these sometimes were invisible in the build that I now have. The big thing though on day three was implementing an XP system along with the ability to purchase upgrades for your little smiley boy. These would, you know, decrease the charge time of your abilities or give you more health, etc. Putting the UI for this together was a bit of a pain, but I got it working in the end, and I was using scriptable objects to save the states of the upgrades, which worked fine in the editor, but it was after sending this build out to a friend that I really realized something that I'm embarrassed I didn't know sooner. Scriptable objects don't save data in a built version of the game. So day four, the first point of order was to rewrite my saver mechanics to be an actual saving mechanic and not using scriptable objects. I swapped this all over to saving out a JSON file instead of relying on the scriptable object. And then I put a lot of bug fixing work together to make sure this all worked okay and that it would load and save the data when it needed to be used and refresh this stat panel here. Also up to this point, the game was running at around 220 frames per second and it would make even my 3080 produce god awful coil wine. So I implemented an options menu with a settable FPS and a V-Sync option as there was also a lot of screen tearing happening. Day 5 was more of the same, a few more bits of flair and polish and balancing to try out and get the movement speed feeling good. And you know, tweaking the XP progression and flow uh, and bug fixing with some of the save load stuff that I just haven't caught the first time around. In this time I'd also be playing a lot of the fantastic Death's Door, and when you die and get that game you get this big death screen coming up. And I've been struggling to make the player defeat in my game uh, impactful, so I implemented the same mechanic into this game.
So that brings us on to day six slash seven. Unfortunately, I didn't get a huge amount of work done on day six, so I didn't have a specific day six build. Aside from just more balancing stuff, I mainly just added the ability to control the volume of the music as it was getting annoying when I was playtesting it. I gave the game out at this point to my mate who did more testing for me and threw some more bugs my way, which was, you know, this, that's fine. This is fine. But I squashed them and it's now day seven and I'm typing up this devlog script. As well as writing up the script, I got to work uploading the builds to itch along with putting up some artwork. I used the name Smileyboy as a placeholder throughout this whole thing, but I don't actually have an affinity for the name. I don't particularly like it. I'd love to know if you've got any ideas for a better name in the comments below. I was thinking Terminal Velocity, but I think that's a bit crap. Or Spinball, but there's a Sonic Pinball game with the same name, so don't think I can use that. I've got some ideas for how I'd like to continue this project if I get time, such as adding a bigger level or having some sort of procedural level design with kind of like a boss enemy at the end that you have to get your get through to, almost like a mini one level roguelike. All in all, this project was a huge amount of fun, and the initial one hour challenge was a great experience. And because of this, it led to this little game which I'm actually quite proud of now. If you liked what you saw in the one week version, I've actually started developing the game further. The game is no longer called Smiley Boy, uh, I thought it was a bit silly. It's called Revelocity, which is uh, kind of a mash of the words of revolution and uh, velocity. Revolution, not as in like Che Guevara, but revolution is in like spinning, uh, revolutions per minute. It's also up on Steam to wishlist now. The link is below. If you could spare a wishlist, that'd be really good. Obviously, I know everyone's asking you to wishlist their games, but you know, it's free and it really helps out these small indie games. It will be my first commercial game release and it'll be cheap as well. I'm, it's gonna be under 10 pounds as the current thinking. Uh, I've not decided on exact pricing yet. I need to work out like how many units I think I'm gonna sell and then how much I need to make, etc., etc. all of that businessy stuff. If you do want to play the one week build, you can do so already on itch. It's uh, linked in the description below too. And you can also play the weird intermediary builds like the one day build, the one hour build, stuff like that. But yeah, keep your eyes peeled for more dev vlogs on this game in the future. They'll be here on the channel, so subscribe if you're into that. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.